Hello, you know last quarter became pretty successful for Kinera, they released a bunch of really good models in the affordable segment, but what's more interesting, they released a few good in-air monitors in the upper mid and high end segment. I already reviewed Imperial Balder 2 and today we'll talk about the other model from their Imperial series, it's Scald. Uh, by specs and by uh, bit by design and other stuff it reminds their Norn model, but there are a lot of differences and uh, that, that makes this model really interesting. It's a 5 uh, balanced armature in air monitors uh, using, uh, if I remember right, 3 Sonion drivers and uh, 2 custom ones. Of course, as usual, Kinera did their best to re release the most beautiful model you've ever seen. And the uh, price, price is set about $550 and uh, now we'll have a closer look and find out why it's so. Package is traditional for the Kinera, hexagonal in shape, wrapped in plastic, looks uh, pretty attractive. Uh, there are some interesting references about the name, about some quote and so on. So, as usual with Kinera earphones you also getting a piece of interesting history. On the back side, oh sorry, not Sony, on 3 Knowles balanced armatures plus uh, 2 Kinera custom ones. And impedance 23 ohms, uh, sensitivity 120 decibels, so a bit on the sensitive side of things, wide frequency response, and as you can see, frequency response chart is almost flat. And also here is the list of what you get inside. So let's open the box, as usual, opening of the box for Kinera earphones is a pleasant experience. They always delivering nice stylish designs both inside and outside. So really tight fitting lid. Inside there is a description of all that references. So you can see big nice looking uh, inlet with information about tuning about scald and so on. Short user manual, silica hell and uh, type E uh, final audio tips manual. As usual you will get a nice set of tips, so five pair of final audio tips and in my opinion it's the best option one can get two pair of forms, adapters for the balanced pentacon connector used here, so let's get ear pieces out and let's put box away. And here inside of this case a bunch of extra tips, so black silicone, grey silicone with uh, blue inner tubes, so you can see that there are a lot of, lot of uh, tips and accessories, even the cleaning tool is present. And here are ear pieces themselves, let me probably zoom in a little bit, it's too much, slide, yeah, probably this way it will be optimal. As usual, in terms of design, they are great and with each other model, Kinera managed to find something new and beautiful. For example, if you look at this faceplate in frontal projection, you see that, that uh, interesting uh, grid-like texture. But when you turn it sideways, some transparent pieces started glowing and you finding out that this faceplate even more complicated that it looks at first sight. And they used similar glittering pieces here and there, some uh, gold inserts, so really cool model that looks bright and at the same time it not looks too, uh, too bright. And in terms of design it's traditional shape fitting nicely into ears with good extended spouts, that means even slightly above average uh, sound isolation. Uh, shells are not transparent, so 
I can see some drivers inside, but it's not that case when you can count them or see the internals. There are three separate uh, bores in the spout, so probably they organized in three ways with separate uh, bores for each one. Uh, there is no lip for holding the tips, but uh, spout extends a little bit to the end, so it holds tip tips uh, pretty normally. So, and, and of course, uh, needless to say, that uh, build quality is superb and they look solid. Stock cable is also pretty nice. It's uh, silver plated copper, it's soft. The, I reviewed Kinera cables recently. And uh, actually that mid-segment silver plated uh, copper cable was harder than this one. Stock cable for Scald is soft. Here used uh, two pin connectors, so let's, let's connect one. So it's for the right earpiece and it goes in here. Nice, good fitting. There is ear hooks uh, without memory wire, but it reduces microphonic effect. And cable itself is really nice. It's, it feels pleasant, four wires per each ear, uh, looks good feels soft, uh, not easy to tangle, doesn't get hard when it's cold outside, small splitter with chin slider and after this splitter it goes braided down to the pentacon connector. So as you can see, Kinera understands the modern tendencies and they use pentacon as a default option. So to summarize everything about the exterior, I think there is no need to say that everything is done on the superb level traditional for the Kinera. And of course about the sound. I tried to burn them in for 48 hours, but there were no changes in sound and it's a pretty expectable outcome as usually balanced armatures didn't change sound during the burn in process. So if you'll decide to buy them, just start experimenting with tips, no need to spend time burning them in. Let's have a player on the table, it will be Ibasso DX300. Really good match for these earphones, actually. In terms of tuning, Kinero decided to go... Actually, it's not mainstream, because nowadays it's uh, rarely met tuning, but uh, like six or seven years ago, it was a popular type of tuning of multi-balanced armatures. They are natural, you've seen that flat frequency response and it's actually close to what you hear, but at the same time it thanks to the properly put harmonics and overtones and stuff, they sound pretty musical and doesn't sound too sharp or too clinical. Pretty enjoyable signature, especially if you like mid-centric representation. So, Base here is good, it goes to a nice depth, it shows a good impact, but at the same time it's not uh, highlighted, it's not emphasized like it's commonly done in modern V-shaped tuned models. So it's a perfect base for acoustic instruments, for the genres where you'll need resolution because it has a really good amount of small nuances and details and uh, low frequency sounds really embossed with good amount of realism, it shines with uh, double bass, with low notes of uh, fortepiano and so on. With electronic music it's actually also pretty enjoyable thanks, thanks to a good impact, but uh, for if you have a lot of electronic music in your media library it's better to get something hybrid and with more ac accented low frequencies with, uh, uh, with a more modern approach. And let's talk about the examples. So, first one is deluxe edition of uh, Deep Purple made in Japan. So, let me see, is it a maximum brightness? So, let's add a bit more brightness. So, I like this live album. It's one of the greatest in the history of rock. And, uh, of course, you understand why smoke on the water is here, because that part where bass guitar enters sounds really superb. And thanks to the rep 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 representa sorry, representation, I don't know why I can't pronounce this word, thanks to the representation of this model, it, this bass guitar sounds super, uh, actually not super accented, but uh, super juicy and super pleasant. And second example is actually electronic music, it's yellow, Don Turbulento and uh, 
it starts with uh, some uh, wind instrument that goes to low frequencies and uh, actually maybe someone knows the name of the instrument please write a comment i'm not good in recognizing instruments by ears and uh, also there is a nice bass line but at the same time it's not emphasized uh, like done in, co in modern electronic music and this model renders it nicely and greatly they also are really coherent so uh, that stitching of drivers is done really nicely it's hard to notice the places where frequency bands overlap so coherence is nice and low frequencies are controlled well and not shadowing mid frequencies mids are natural slightly more focused on the micro contrast but not going too much in, in this uh, aspect and uh, not trying to be clean, super clinical or super analytical because they also distribute weight uh, really nicely and that gives a good body to the vocal and uh, to the instruments they are not highlighting emotions so in this aspect they will just play what is present in the record they require some good recorded material but they are not super clinical or super analytical in this aspect also you need to notice that they don't have a traditional upper mid uh, uh, bump and that means that uh, uh, you need to use the little bit to that representation but actually it happens really fast because uh, resolution and control here is really nice imaginary stage is noticeably above average in width slightly less uh, uh, big in depth but still shows nice uh, depth layer separation and first example it's led zeppelin kashmir pretty complex track that uh, requires nice resolution and control and this earphones plays it nicely and at the same time this track doesn't like analytic super analytical earphones because it uh, loses uh, liveliness and emotions and uh, that doesn't happen with Kinera Scald. and actually second example of the classics i want to break free freddy's vocal sounds magnificent with these earphones and sounds really pleasant and uh, treble here is not accented but it's also not recessed so if you're sensitive to the treble keep in mind that this model doesn't try to shadow high frequencies or to smooth them or to do something with them but at the same time they're not highlighting them and uh, in terms of resolution attacks and decays it's uh, just traditional balanced armatures resolving nice uh, bit lightweight uh, clean and crisp extension is above average so they require tracks with uh, properly recorded treble otherwise they will show what that something is wrong with treble and uh, in general they show nice uh, layer uh, nice overtone saturation uh, slightly better than basic layering and uh, in general treble is pretty good for this uh, segment and price tire and first example it's john carpenter abyss and uh, it's uh, interesting retro wave track john carpenter is a great director who created many classical horror movies but also soundtracks for many of them he composed himself and this track uh, sounds uh, really interesting and pleasant and it has a lot of synthesizers that goes high to the freak, uh, to the treble area and uh, it requires nice control to separate all that uh, samples from one uh, one from another and these earphones uh, play it uh, pretty well and second one is just Hiromi Uyehara Labyrinth uh, great track great uh, fortepiano nice record quality and that means a lot of overtones that goes to the high frequency area and this model played nicely not absolutely perfectly but uh, on a really good level in terms of pairing they require some player with a black background they don't require some powerful source actually they require they plays better with sources with low volume because they are really sensitive 120 decibels and uh, that means that you need something with black background and you need a player of at least uh, mid segment but basically entry top segment is also really good with them speaking about the compressions there are a lot of models actually but uh, 
I already mentioned Kinera Norn. Norn is more V-shaped and uh, has more weight on the low frequencies. But uh, there are a lot of hybrid models. I won't uh, do comparisons with hybrids because hybrids usually means uh, more weighty low frequencies, more air pumped and uh, so on. Uh, let's try to recall some balanced armature models. And uh, actually high B Crystal 6. Crystal 6 is a bit more monitoring and focused on the micro contrast, uh, slightly more analytical sounding. More actually it uh, deserves its name crystal sounding more uh, crystal like and uh, uh, audio sense uh, dt oh sorry audio sense t800 and dt600 they are pure balanced armatures but they are more v-shaped they have more accents on the low lows and in the treble area sounding more fun Fios FA9 is uh, also a pretty natural balanced armature earphones, but FA9 uh, slightly uh, less weighty on the mid frequencies and uh, a bit better extended on the trebles and a bit better doing uh, treble layering. Uh, other some other multi balanced armature models that I can't recall right now, probably. But uh, it was a model that I wanted to mention, that I did a big compression. So, to summarize everything, uh, really good model, especially if you listen to so-called audiophilic genres, if you want to enjoy small nuances and details, if you like mid-centric representation, it's definitely a model worth considering. And add here a good uh, price for this value and extremely stylish, unique, actually it's unique design, you understand why Kinera Scald received so many positive feedback. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a nice day.